You know when shit hits the fan in life and you start questioning everything, you start questioning your business, you start questioning what you're doing here in terms of what is your purpose? What is the point of the business that you're in? Well, today I'm going to share with you some of the challenges that have come into my life um, and share with you a decision that I've made around this podcast. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Katherine Taneka. I am a fitness, nutrition, and accountability coach and the host and producer of this podcast, The Body Project Podcast. And I have the privilege over the last two years of sharing my story and the story of so many fitness professionals, fitness and movement professionals that have shared their life's work of how they use fitness as a modality to transform their clients' entire lives. And it has been two years, over two years now, almost two and a half years that I've been sharing these conversations with you because I think that these conversations really matter and, and I still think they matter. But over the span of the last six months since COVID, I've had the opportunity, like many of you, to reflect and think about what is important and what matters. And on top of that, I have also been confronted with my body's ability to be strong and to keep moving. So like some of you have heard, I've shared with you my diagnosis of a grade two spondylolisthesis. This is a big issue in my back that I've had probably for most of my life, but it's been haunting me for the last two and a half years. So in 2018, in April, April 2nd to be exact, I tore my left glute doing high volume front squats. And it was a 22 centimeter tear in my glute that I thought was just the glute. But in the process of them trying to figure out if it was a herniation in my, my back, if it was something with like back spasms, they found that I have this grade two spondylolisthesis. So it is a spondylolysis, so my vertebrae is out of alignment uh, because uh, if you can imagine, your vertebrae has these little prongs that stack on top of each other that is literally your backbone and the stability of your body. And they discovered that I'm missing that piece for some reason, whether it was trauma or congenital, the way that I was born, I'm missing this piece. And they believe that when I tore my glute, the force perhaps forced more movement in this spine that is missing that piece. And so I have a grade two spondylolisthesis. So I don't have my vertebrae stacked. My L5, the bottom of my lumbar spine region, the vertebrae, is out of alignment. Grade two is the degree of which it is slipped out, right? And what I also have in addition to that is because of this misalignment, this lo loss of structural integrity, is that I have impingement on the nerves, right? The nerve bundle that comes out of your spine and supplies blood and feeling to the rest of your body and all other things that happen is now impinged. I have what's called a severe stenosis, severe impingement on the left side of my body. So I've been kind of dealing with this over the last two and a half years since the tear. And it was quite severe in terms of pain when it initially happened, obviously, because I had that glute tear that now caused pain and pressure in that area. And I would just get really weird referral nerve pain and pressure down my left side of my leg. 
Now, over the span of the first six months to a year, I had PRP. So this is plasma-rich platelets, which I've spoken about on the podcast before, that got injected into the site to stimulate repairing. Um, and I had a lot of physio in this area to make sure that everything is stable and my glute gets strong. Now, I've got a couple things going on. I've got the glute tear and this spondylolisthesis that has been maybe perpetuated by this force of the tear, right? And it has been haunting me for the past two and a half years. I probably should take and change my language around that. It has always been in my awareness because I get this referral nerve sensation. And even though conceptually I understand what a Charlie horse or cramp is, being in the fitness world, being really in tune with my body, I've never personally experienced cramping in my body until this tear. And now because of loss of maybe circulation, loss of nerve stimulation, I experience cramping on my left side, specifically in my foot and along my, um, in my toes and along my calf often, like several times a week. Now, being in the profession I am, I have the privilege of being able to move my body often, right? I stand with my clients most of the days, at least, you know, six hours or more a day with my clients. And I get to work out by choice, right? And especially since COVID in the last six months, because I'm doing this online studio that we do five live workouts a week, I am doing the workouts along with my clients live. So it has facilitated the ability to be able to move my body. Now, what has been happening over the last year is I have been losing muscle mass on the left side, so much so that I think I did speak about this probably about a year ago in my podcast, but um, my sports med guy, Dr. Tony Gallia, out of the um, the Institute of Human Mechanics in Toronto uh, did a measurement probably about six months ago and found that I have about three centimeters of atrophy around my left calf compared to my right calf and about one centimeter of atrophy around my quad. So the girth around my quad and my calf are smaller on my left side than it is on the right. So this shows a couple things that maybe there's loss of circulation to the muscles as well as loss of sensation, nerve conduction to be able to get the, the muscles to fire, right? Because your nerves are very intertwined with, of course, movement and firing of contractions of muscles, right? So I've got severe atrophy on this side. And what I've noticed through doing my workout, since I am consistently working out five days a week, that I am, I have loss of balance significantly on that side. I can't do any balance poses in yoga. And I'm really challenged when I do any single leg exercises on that side. So not only do I have glute weakness, right? But I have balance loss and I have strength loss for sure right? Not that I lift so heavy, but from whatever I do have to execute on terms of a one side versus a, another side exercise, I feel that weakness there. Now that might be glute dominant because of the glute tear. That might be also because of compensation, because of course I had this glute tear. I was compensating because of that injury for so, such a long time. So that might be a weakness. But over the last four months now, I've had the opportunity to be able to go to get an MRI, uh, get a CT scan, just to look at the structural integrity of my vertebrae. And I had an EMG as recent as about a month and a bit ago. And the EMG showed that although my nerve was pissed off once before, uh, that it was uh, perhaps impinged or traumatized or a little bothered, it has regenerated or it's showing that the nerve conduction is not as bad as perceived, which is great. So that piece of the puzzle is great. However, I still have weakness. I still have balance loss. And I have a lot of weird pain in the span of the last six months because I haven't been walking as much as usual. Actually, I, very, I do very minimal walking. So that is one of the things I'm going to be taking on. I probably get maybe 2,000 steps because I sit on a computer all day editing podcasts, creating content for my online program when I'm not staying with my clients. So although I am 
physically active, standing with my clients, training them and moving, I'm not actually walking, right? That perpetual motion of one foot in front of the other, that primal being able to move around, I've kind of cut that out. So that's one issue. But more than that, I am in pain almost every day. Sitting here talking to you, I would say it's a five, you know, 10 being the most painful. I have got this five low grade um, pain that goes from the outside of my left knee all the way down to the outside backside of my ankle down to my foot. And it's like, feels like a pressure pain. It's uncomfortable and it feels nerve like a nerve sensation pain. You know, if you, <laughs> my background of being a dental hygienist for over 10 years, you know that nerve sensitivity sometimes you get if you have some recession because you've been brushing too hard or you're a grinder or a clencher and you drink cold water, you have something sweet and you get this zinging kind of pain in your mouth, that, that nerve sensitivity, that's the same kind of pain that I'm getting down my leg, right? And anyway, let's fast forward. So I have made a decision to pause the conversation on this podcast. It has been over two and a half years that other than the last month, I've been releasing an episode every single week. That is over 104, because two years, right? 104. So probably, I mean, how many episodes are we at? Almost 200 episodes. Every single week, I have not missed a week. And you know, it is only less than an hour episode a week, but this takes something, right? Emailing the guests, lining up the guests, setting up the recording. I research every single guest that I have to know who they are and how they show up for their clients uh, and some of the research of, you know, the modalities that they practice under. And then there's the recording piece. And then thereafter, there's the editing, the show notes, the creating of the podcast episode, producing that, all of the ins and outs, and this video, right? I haven't done videos for the entire time, but it takes something. It's at least three to five hours per episode, <laughs> the behind the scenes that you don't see. And um, it takes a lot of bandwidth. And so I've made a big decision to put a pause on this conversation. And one of the reasons is my physical body, that I need to create some space for self-care, right? To practice what I preach. Because one of the things that I preach to all of you that we speak about often on the podcast with my guests and what I talk about intensively with my clients is that self-care is super important in the embodiment of you becoming the best version of yourself. And as a facilitator, sometimes it becomes easy to put everyone else first, right? You know this, if you are a working mom, that it is easy to put our kids first. It is easy to put our partners first, our careers first, our friends first, our families first. And sometimes this is why self-care and the conversation of turning it back on ourselves becomes a challenging one, that we don't put ourselves first. And in this journey of me creating this platform, being a thought leader and a change agent in the voice of these incredible fitness professionals, of them being the voice for their clients to be the catalyst of change and accountability, I have not put myself first in my own life, in my own self-care. And it has become very apparent and evident with this injury, with my spondylolisthesis staring me in the face. And, you know, I don't share a lot of the downs, not the downsides. I don't share... I try to be as transparent and authentic as possible in my life with my clients, but maybe I don't share enough of the challenges that I deal with and how I navigate that. And so I wanted to share a little bit about that today openly because I had a conversation last week with my potential surgeon, one of the best back surgeons uh, in this area in terms of having to rehabilitate a spondylolisthesis. His name is Dr. Raja Rampersad. He is out of the Toronto Western Hospital here in Toronto and, and, and has huge um, accolades around being able to perform these key entry surgeries to rehab a spine and stabilize a spine. 
right? And so for my consideration, uh, I have a grade two spinal anesthesis with severe stenosis on the left side and a moderate to severe on the right. And what he proposed when we spoke is that I would need a back fusion, fusion of L5, which is your base lumbar vertebrae, to S1, which is your sacrum, right? The bottom, the tailbone. Um, and I would have to get those two fused. Now, a couple considerations. My business is fitness. I train clients every single day, physically, in person. So I need my body to move, right? And my passion is movement. So I move my body every single day. Uh, and so a fusion is about a year recovery. Six months of probably not being able to train my clients the way that I would like because I can't stand, right? Six months of intense rehab and recovery. And then a full year to make sure the, the fusion takes place. So basically, the CT scan gave Dr. Ramprasad the ability to look at my vertebrae. You know, I'm only five, two and a half, pushing five, two and three quarters. Um, and so he wanted to look at the structure integrity of my vertebrae if they're big enough to be able to drill rods and pins into my spine. So they literally would drill, from my understanding, drill into my spine, the two vertebrae, and put a rod in between, take a piece of bone from perhaps my hip or my femur, not sure, and wedge it in there to create space between these vertebrae and pull it back to realign it, right? Pretty in in extensive surgery, pretty intensive recovery. And so, you know, I've been thinking about putting a pause on this conversation for a while, especially after COVID, not knowing where to go with it. Um, but especially after that conversation last week, I need to build a team around me, like I build a team around myself for my business, right? I've got you know, a board of advisors, I have a business mastermind, I have advisors in my life, mentors that I look to in terms of business so that I can build this podcast, build my online offerings and offer the best training that I can to my clients. Um, and, you know, having the conversation with the surgeon, talking about what the surgery entails, why I should consider it, what to consider in terms of the risk, has made me notice that I need to take a pause. So that's one reason to take a pause on this conversation. The second, and that's not to say that I'm not going to do this podcast anymore. I just need to step back and build a team around my health so that I know that I have done everything humanly possible to rehab this injury, right? Because I do know that even though I work out five days a week and I keep my body strong, it's within the realm of optimizing that I know of. I have not, even though initially when I did injure myself, I was going for physio and I was seeing a rehab specialist, Dr. Shane, that I spoke with on this podcast, that I need to build a team to support me in this because I haven't given it my all in that. And before I get on a surgery table and rehab and take a year recovery after a surgery, I need to know just for me that I have done everything possible to make sure that I'm making the right decision. Because truthfully, guys, I don't know what the decision should be at this point. Uh, and I feel super overwhelmed at the thought of going into surgery and what that could mean, right? The truth is, is that it's pretty low risk. There is one to 2% of getting drop foot that they may impinge or sever a nerve, a nerve that goes down to my foot so I wouldn't be able to flex it anymore, which would totally change my gait, totally change the experience of being a fitness professional in this world. Um, and who knows, there's always the possibility back surgery is severe, right? Going in and that your body doesn't take the rods and pins don't take, um, you never know. Right. Uh, and so that surgery may change completely the trajectory of my business 
of my offering, of my ability as a fitness coach to be able to be physical with my clients. And so from a spiritual level, I don't think this is a mistake. This is not a coincidence. I don't believe anything is a coincidence. And this for sure is not coincidence. Um, there is a bigger lesson for me in this journey of life, in this lifetime, to learn why I chose the, this profession of being so physical, where that's where I find my power. If you've listened to, I believe it was episode one, fitness has been my savior through so much. Through my insecurities as a kid, it has empowered me to become the person I am today and has empowered me to be strong in my body, right? And so there is no question that for some reason, my body is telling me something, right? That being a fitness professional, all of a sudden the integrity of my entire body is being compromised. There is no question there is something of a lesson there. But more than that, I, my intention with this podcast is not only to be a thought leader, but to create impact, to create impact in all of you, whether it's motivation, whether it's inspiration, whether it's knowledge, to remind that you that you can too, that you can live the best version, your body 2.0 in this lifetime, your body 2.0 starting now, not one day, someday, then. I believe that it is now. It is now that we can live our best versions. It is now that we can live our highest self. And in that conversation with COVID showing up, with Black Lives Matter showing up, with Canada really looking at indigenous oppression, I'm looking to see where I can create the biggest impact where I can make a difference. If you listen to some of the podcasts around the time of Black Lives Matter, around the time of George Floyd, around the conversation of Breonna Taylor, um, it is bigger than me where I wanna make an impact in the fitness space to look at Fitness is an opportunity not only to access your best version of empowering yourself, but how can we access the best version to increase accessibility of fitness to those that maybe have been oppressed, that don't have access? I'm so grateful that I have these unbelievable clients, but it's a luxury that they can pay me the cost to have a trainer once a week, twice a week, three times a week, to have someone to guide you online, to hold you accountable to showing up for yourself. That is a privilege and a luxury, and it shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be that only those that can afford it can afford to have strong, capable, immune, strong bodies. And so my goal I mean, I've got a lot in the works. My goal is to create accessibility, increase accessibility, increase diversity, increase equality and equitability in the fitness space. And I'm working to do that because I realize this isn't just a one person thing. I'm not going to make the change. But like building a team around my health, I'm working to build a team around these conversations. And it takes something, guys. Um, it takes a lot of thought and a lot of considerations and a lot of understanding and education. Um, because even though I am, I come from a multi-race family, my mother being French Canadian and my father being Japanese, and I identify as multi-racial, right? It isn't going to take just me. It isn't going to take just that. And in this movement and trying to increase accessibility and diversity and, you know, touching on these important conversations, it is about bringing social justice. It is about looking how can we fund these programs that are so important to empower those that has been, have been disempowered and, disempowered and have been oppressed, right? And I know it's not going to take just 
me and this generation. But I think it is important. And I think fitness, like I've said before, is fitness coaches, this is our thing, right? We specifically and intentionally put our clients in uncomfortable positions, in discomfort in their body. We push them. I push myself to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? I think it was Brittany Love, who I interviewed, my God, hundreds of episodes ago, that we spoke about this, right? She is an incredible voice, guiding light leader in her community, in women about body love, right? About getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, getting comfortable with our bodies being exactly as they are, not wanting to change, not needing to change, because you're beautiful, perfect, and unbelievable just where you are right? And so how can we bring that to the conversations of those who have been impressed, those who don't feel like they're beautiful because of their skin color, because of their birth, who they've been born to, whether it's indigenous, black, brown, right? So how can I stand up? Because I've said before, it is not enough to stand in solidarity, but some of us just don't know how to stand up right? And so I am doing the thing. I'm walking the walk, talking the talk, not just in solidarity, but actually trying to make a difference, standing up, rolling up, putting myself out there, coming out on a limb, whatever metaphors there are out there to make a difference, to make an impact, to make a change. And so part of the pause from this conversation, even though I may jump on these little blips of you know, giving you the pep talk, reminding you that you matter, reminding you that you can show up every single day in a practice, a baby step that makes progress when you layer those baby steps on top of each other. That I need to take a pause so I can build a team around myself for my health, so I can keep showing up for you, for myself and my family. But that I can build a team around a greater vision and mission for this body, for this body project, for Catherine Tanaka, for social justice, social justice, for fitness inclusion, fitness diversity, for fitness accessibility and equitability, right? To lend a voice to those that need a voice now more than ever, to move out of the way to support the end of oppression, to support empowerment of those who have not been empowered enough. And so that is it. I'm taking a pause from this conversation. Um, and it's hard. Because part of committing to something greater than yourself is that you keep showing up even when you don't want to. You keep showing up even when there are so many excuses. I've done podcasts when I've been sick. I've done podcasts when my kids have been sick. I've done podcasts when I feel like, who the fuck am I to have a podcast? Who am I to be a voice of change? Who am I to be a thought agent? I've done a podcast when I've been away on trips. I've done podcasts when I felt like shit. I've done podcasts when I felt depressed, not worthy, never enough to show up. Because this conversation I know is bigger than myself. This conversation is for you because you matter. Because I show up for you so you can show up for yourself. And that's what this conversation is. It's bigger than myself. So this is a pause, not a goodbye so that I can take care of myself, so that I then can give my greatest to you. And so my hope is that you will listen to some amazing, inspiring conversation that I have had already. And my hope is that you'll follow me on Instagram so that you see what I'm up to and how I navigate these conversations for myself. It's katherinetanaka.fit on Instagram. 
And if I start documenting the challenge of the spondylolisthesis and the spondylolysis and how I'm navigating deciding surgery or not, I welcome you to join me on YouTube, Catherine Saka. Um, and stay tuned because I'm not sure when I will be back on the podcast to jump on to have the conversation. But I know that the Body Project podcast is about the best project you could ever take on yourself. And so this is a pause, not a farewell. And I appreciate all of you who have been listening week after week, who've been supporting week after week, who've been joining me on Instagram, following along those stories and those conversations. And I welcome you to keep going, keep listening, because this isn't gone forever but I will not be making an episode every single week. So this is me tuning out. I appreciate you. I appreciate you always having been here listening. I appreciate that you are taking on your greatest self because in our moments of challenge, I believe fitness, is that practice, is a beautiful modality that you can get into your breath, right? Meditation through motion, breathing consistently because you need to while you're moving. And so my prayer is that you will keep moving your body, you will keep being inspired and and empowered by your own self, your own focus, your discipline, reminding yourself every day that you can, that you are your biggest cheerleader and that you can do your body 2.0, your best self, and that your highest version is available to you today. That it is a mindset, a combination of mind, body, spirit. And so thank you for joining me every single week. I will see you very soon hereafter. I love and appreciate all of you. Bye for now.